part of the invisible church, those who are truly regenerate, those who are truly born again, the elect. So Jesus makes it very clear that people who don't abide in him, and that would be abide in his teaching, by the way, and these false teachers are not abiding in his teaching. If they were, they wouldn't be spewing heresies. So anyway, we have gone way over than what I wanted to do or wanted to go. But let's let's continue in the video anyway. If we can't, um, if we can't look at some verses, maybe we'll add. Maybe we'll just do a part two here. Maybe we'll do a part two, and we'll just talk about verses that deal with election, verses that deal with God's sovereignty. Maybe that's what we'll do. I hate doing that, but I've gone way over, and I did not even intend to really get into that verse. But I just wanted to explain what that verse is talking about. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So the idea that a limited atonement, it's an atonement only for the elect and the non-elect were not atoned for, it contradicts this statement here. Now, when I've brought this up to Calvinists, they tend to say, well, that's a hard verse. We don't really know what it means. Let's not talk about it. Of course, it's a hard. Yeah, Calvinists who have not looked at scripture, maybe. Calvinists who have not studied. But I found that it's usually the Calvinists who properly exegete scripture verse because it contradicts their <laughs> theory so but i like to stick with the bible and not with the uh the theories of these guys yeah if you need another verse uh kelly first timothy 2 4 is one i like speaking of the lord jesus who desires all people or all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth well if the lord wants everyone to be saved then how come they aren't all saved something's keeping them from being saved isn't it and it doesn't seem to be the lord's will so somebody else has to get in the way there god is not willing that any should perish. Yeah. But the- you know, we're going to have to um, we're going to have to just do a podcast, and, and hopefully, uh, in, in the near future, when Steve and I can get together, both of us together, and do a podcast together. And, and, and I'd love to get with Tony, and, uh, Tony, and, and Steve and I together. And, and as soon as I get my equipment fixed, which we can't do Skype right now because my equipment's all messed up, and so. Uh, I can't do that, but hopefully within the next month or so, I would love, I would love, or maybe, maybe Tony, if you're listening, we can uh, use your, uh, some of your stuff and, and, and maybe you can Skype me through and we can all talk about, we can all talk about these problem passages uh, that uh, Chuck Smith here um that Chuck Smith uh, mentions, because we're, we're going to have to. We don't have time to deal with these passages uh, on this episode, um, but... I would love to do that. So uh, maybe that's what we will say for another episode. Well, as you come to repentance, so if God is sovereign, yeah, you know, and His will is going to be done, yeah. Uh, then uh, why did Jesus have to come and die? I mean, exactly. You know, he, He's not willing that any should perish, but surely uh, there are people who perish. So mm-hmm. well, and you know, with the Calvinistic view that man doesn't have a will, there is, you know, okay, that is a false statement. Calvinistic view that men don't have a will? Calvinists believe that we have a will? I have a will? Our will is fallen, but we have a will. We do exactly what we desire to do. What Calvinists say is that our will is fallen, and we don't desire God. We are born God-haters. And, and we always, by the way, We always choose what we desire most at any given time, don't we? And people do not desire God. They just, they're born enemies of God. They're born slaves to their sin, enemies of God, at war with God, dead in trespasses and sins. But Calvinists do not say that we don't have a will. We have a will. Our will is fallen. Now, to say that we are free and we have a free will in the sense that we are able to choose God, no, that's just wrong because the Bible contradicts that. But Calvinists do believe that we have a will. One will, and it's God's will. There is no free will. How does that sit with the words of Jesus in John 5.40 when he said to them, but you are not willing to come to me? He's going to get ready to quote a verse about Jesus saying, um, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who stone the prophets, um, you know, uh, you who stone the prophets, I would have been just like a chicken or, or a hen. I would have gathered you under my wings, but you were not willing. Listen to what he says here, and then we're going to we're going to we're going to quote. We're going to say what the verse really says. Listen to this. 
So <laughs> Jesus seemed to indicate, it, yeah. uh, indicate that they did have uh, a will, and it was because they weren't exercising their will properly that they were um, not going to be saved. So, And again, we have to mention one more, uh, Matthew 23, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wing. But, but you, you would not. Yeah, you would not, not. That is not what the verse says, okay? And this is a classic mistake. Let's go over and read the verse. It's Matthew twenty three thirty seven. Old Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones the who, those who are sent to it. Now listen to this. How often I would have gathered your children, not you. He's not saying how often I would have gathered you. He said how often I would have gathered your children together as a hens gather her brood under her wings, but you we're not willing. You, Jerusalem, were not willing. Jerusalem is being compared to the false teachers. Jesus had just denounced and, uh, the seven woes to the scribes and the Pharisees. He, in, in context, this is referring to the scribes and the Pharisees. They not letting people come to salvation, holding them back. This has nothing to do with uh, the, the people wanting, you know, pe- people not having the, not, not willing to come. No, this, this, this is dealing with the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus said, again, how often I would have gathered your children. But what did Chuck Smith and the uh, two men that were in his studio say? How often I would have gathered you. That's not what he said. How often I would have gathered your children. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's quote the verse properly there, men. You could not. They did not. They would not believe. That assumes they had a choice. And so if they, if Jesus thought they had a choice, we're going to stick with Jesus. We believe they really had a legitimate choice. So anyway. Don, let me throw one more. Okay, one more. <laughs> <laughs> we get uh, going on that. John seven seventeen. Oh, if yeah. If anyone wills to do his <laughs> will, he shall know concerning the doctrine. So. <laughs> Yeah, that verse has nothing to do with salvation. Go back and look at it in context. But anyway, we continue. Jesus said it right there. You know, I've often said about Calvinism, guys, Calvinism is Christianity without Jesus. There it is. There it is. Calvinism is Christianity without Jesus. On the contrary, Calvinism is all about Jesus. Completely and totally about Jesus. Jesus. Uh, hence uh, the, 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 the acronym Limited Atonement. Hence the uh, acronym Total Depravity, uh, Unconditional Election, uh, Perseverance of the Saints, Irresistible Grace. Hence all of those. It's all dealing with salvation. Calvinism believes that God is sovereign over every area of life, over everything. Calvinism believes that God is the one who is the author of salvation and that Jesus is the one who came for those whom God chose from before the foundation of the world. Calvinism is all about Jesus. It is not Christianity without Jesus. That is just ridiculous, stupid, and wrong to say. And honestly, Chuck Smith, I think he knows that. And he should have said something to, and and again, I apologize. I don't know who those men are in the studio with him. I'm I'm sure that uh, I've heard the name Dan mentioned. Um, So I'm sure Dan's probably a regular on the show. But he should have rebuked whoever said that. Or, or, Or at least corrected them. Because these guys know, if they're honest, that that is not what Calvinism is. It is not Christianity without you. What a... How... How is it Christianity without Jesus? When that's what Calvinism is all about. Just crazy, crazy stuff. Let me just finish the video and then we're we're done. Because they leave Jesus out of the equation. Mm. How do they leave Jesus out of the equation? How can, let's see, hmm. Let's see, total depravity, meaning that no one can come to Jesus to be saved, apart from the Father drawing. Um, unconditional, unconditional election, let's see. God uh, chose a particular number of people before the foundation of the world in Christ, for he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Hmm. 
Okay, let's see. So, so that's about Jesus. Limited atonement. Let's see. The atonement is Jesus dying on the cross to pay for the sins of his people. Uh, yeah, that's about Jesus as well. Irresistible grace. Uh, let's see. Those whom the Father draws will come to Christ for salvation. Yeah, that, 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 that. Yeah, that's about Jesus as well. Perseverance of the saints, that those who believe God keeps, they do not fall away. Mm, yeah, that, that's about Jesus too. Everything about Calvinism is about Jesus. So uh, just ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. They just take certain statements of Paul and then, mm. of course, and read their own uh, theology into it. You see that? Look, I've never, I've never been to school. I've, I don't have a theology degree, but I have read my Bible. And I do know that Paul isn't the only one who talked about election. Jesus, Jesus talked about it all throughout the Gospels. That's why next time we do a podcast, uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll have to do a part two of this. Because we're going to have to go through the scriptures and we're just going to have to show where Jesus spoke of the elect and, and, and where Peter spoke of the elect and where James spoke of the elect. We're not talking about the, just the Apostle Paul here. I mean, this is, this is dishonest. Just extremely dishonest and sinful. And these men really need to repent for, for this kind of stuff that they put out. So, okay. And that was the end. And, uh, you know, again, we, we've gone almost an hour. And, um, and, and, and unfortunately, I have to go to work. So I, I don't have time to go through the scriptures and uh, show um, every single aspect uh, that I have come up with with or every single aspect, every single verse that I've come up with uh, that deals with election. We'll have to do that another time. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this episode. And um, you can look for us. You can find us on Facebook at um, facebook.com forward slash long for truth. You can also uh, find us on our blog at uh, uh, www.longfortruth.blogspot.com. And uh, you can also email us if you have any questions or concerns about this podcast at longfortruth at gmail.com. Remember, go to uh, the website uh, jdjesusdisciple.com and download the album, What You Almost Missed. We'll see you next time.